just going to cut off these tabs. I already marked out for the door. Um, I want to leave. I don't like the style where they cut all the way around because you open up the door and the smoke that's built up up here, this is the top, immediately can escape. Where if you have a lip, the smoke that's built up in here doesn't want to just rush out into your face. It actually still wants to continue up the flue. So I'm going to cut off these little brackets. Um, I'm going to cut 90% of the door. And then I'm going to weld on my hinges so I get them all so it's perfectly lined up. And then I'm going to finish cutting the door out. Now this is a, um, I use this propane tank for an air tank for years. So I have cycled air in and out of that so many times that there was no remnants of propane in there. But if you were to do this, I would take out the valve and I would blow compressed air through here for a while. Um, I'd probably put water in it, I'd wash it out, I'd dump it. I would just make sure there's no propane remnants in there. Um, and then make sure that the valve is out before you ever attempt to cut on it. You know, blah, 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 do it at your own risk. do is um, fabricate two hinges. I'm going to do, actually I'm going to put the hinges on this side. I want it open this way. This is the top. I want to do, instead of just doing, well I'm debating. You do just flat hinges and they allow the door just to swing directly open or you can do elevated hinges that actually come up, come out and hinge and that allows the door to swing out and out of the way so the back of the door actually probably so the door would actually be sitting right here all the way open that kind of puts it out of the way um, the other hinge is just this door still kind of sits right there we'll do I'll probably do the higher ones so cut out these little um, finger hinges drill the little hole got the bolt in them so they allow the door to swing out open water I've bolted them together this is still hasn't been cut completely free, so I'll set these on here, weld them, and then I'll finish cutting the door out, and then I'll open it up. The biggest thing is, is you just want the hinges to be perpendicular to each other, so they don't fight each other.
have this old um, trampoline support that I think I'm going to use for the legs. I'm actually going to cut, cut it here, cut it here, and have the legs as a V so that they sit. They sit on the ground like this, the tank on top. Um, I actually want the tank kind of high. You know, because I don't want to keep bending it all the way over to deal with this. So I just got to cut, probably cut this at a 45, that at a 45, um, and then just weld it. Weld one on the bottom here at the front, and weld one on the bottom of the back. There we go. Got the legs all mounted. Um, I, I welded a bolt up here so that I can put a little flap and it'll allow this to be the air inlet. I'm not sure if that's gonna work good because I would think that I'd want the airlet in as low as possible. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna put one down here or if I'm just gonna build a little chamber around this and just bring it down lower so the air, cold air sucks in under my grate and out up the chimney. Legs went on good. I built a little, um, had a piece of sheet metal laying on it, just bended up the edges. It's up for riding more. And I'm going to attach that right there so there's a little ash pan type, just little thing in the front so when you open it up, um, if any ashes fall out, they fall in this pan. Um, right now I'm working on the chimney. I have some three inch pipe that I used to be a light post. Um, I cut off the end, uh, the other end. Cut off the end of the taper to get a fitment so I can get a good circle. Because I'm going to put it down at the very, very, very back. So now I got my circle drawn. I'm going to take my plasma cutter and cut it out. Got the hole cut. So test fit it. I want as tight as possible. There we go. It doesn't get much tighter than that. Especially a hole like that. So I should be able to weld around that no problem. The pipe pretty tall though so I'm thinking that I'm gonna cut it uh, here or so and taper it and then make a sleeve because I don't want to carry around I mean you probably you know I probably want a pipe by the side but I don't want to carry around that the fulling pipe all the time or move it around I don't know I don't know. It's got the pipe all welded in. Um, I did the top. What I did was I made a series of slits, held it together, and then uh, welded it and then ground it smooth. So now the other piece of pipe slides on nice and tight. Um, I just barely got done mocking up the handle. Um, what the handle is, is you have a piece of tubing. Let's take that off. You have a piece of tubing right here. Between here and here, this is just welded to the door. And then you have a rod that fits inside with a welded on washer. This washer hasn't been welded on yet, because that'll be the spring tension. And then in the end of this solid rod, I tapped it and put a bolt. And then I just have this little tab that went to something just sitting on there. And that catches on this. See that? So that is sloped, so it catches on this and then stops right there. So, the way it works is, well, we'll put some spring tension on there. 
I'll weld it in when I get it all ready. So I'll just weld this washer in the position that I want it. This allows me to take out this bolt and then this rod will come out so you can take out the whole handle. And then this is a, uh, a spring from a riding mower. This is a riding mower seat spring. I just weld it on the end, keep it from getting hot. So that just goes in. Push the handle in. It latches until it stops. And then that keeps spring pressure on the door. So that's, this spring pressure is actually pushing the door shut at all times. So that door does not budge. That will keep it as airtight as possible. Well, I did the first firing of the pot belly stove, but I ran into one little problem. The, um, the vent on the front. That hole is too small. It's about one inch in diameter. I think I need about a two inch diameter hole. So, I'm going to cut this off. I might just cut her all the way, well, I don't know. Plug that, make a second hole. I don't know, whatever I need to do, I need to make a bigger hole. Either two holes or just one hole because the fire just kept wanting to die out. Um, unless I crack the door open. If I crack the door open, just even about, you know, just that much, it would go even better. But other than that, it burned really nice. Um, the paint started peeling off the pipe, but this paint that's on the outside is pretty resilient stuff. I'm thinking that's high heat paint or something, because that stuff did not come off. Not, not hardly at all. So, I'll get on to that. Decided the one wasn't good enough. I didn't want to be starving for air. So I left the main one on right here that I originally had and I installed two more down here. Same thing on spring hinges. So that'll feed underneath the fire, which I think is actually better. When I originally installed this, I didn't think that was in the right position. But this will actually feed air directly to the top of the fire if I want. Um, but these two will give me more than enough airflow, if need be, to stoke into the bottom of the fire. And chances are this one will probably just stay closed most of the time. Um, there you have it. Uh, I had to modify the pan a little bit that fits down in there. I had to take a chunk out of it to fit around it. I haven't even tried it yet. So. There we go. So that'll feed the oxygen to the fire right underneath it. There you go. It's burning. I welded on a little damper. You can shut or open. And that's just a little butterfly. Ooh, the pipe's already hot. Are those air inlets open? Fire's going. I'd rather come out the front door than up the pipe, apparently. Until the pipe's closed, until the door's shut. And then everything goes out the top.